Hey guys, today we are going to talk about eight cards that have been going up in price. Today we have a very diverse array of cards that are going up in price for different reasons. Opt has jumped a ton because it's in Ixlon. It makes sense, right? People want to play the original Opt from Invasion. It is a long time coming since we've seen Opt. And if you wanted the black border, then this is the time to get it. So it went from a few pennies to almost $3 overnight. Still a going to see play. Cantrips don't need to be that good in standard to see play. And it's been a while since we got a good blue cantrip in standard. This one is uh, has the text change now. It's pretty much scry one, draw a card. Instant speed cantrip, very, very playable. And I would assume it will be a four of in any deck running blue. So next card we are gonna see is from Homelands. This particular card hoses, and this is for EDH, it hoses a creature type. So you choose a creature type, creatures of that type do not untap during their control, it's untap phase. With Tribal being so important, this is kind of the best EDH card. And you can be playing a Tribal deck as long as your tribe is different from your opponents, you'll be fine. It's these random cards that keep going up in price uh, due to EDH. So the first card was due to Standard. The second card was due to EDH. I also believe it's on the reserve list. Someone correct me if that is incorrect. A lot of homelands, especially the rare cards in homelands, are on the reserve list, including my favorite Narwhal. So it's a good, it's going to see Friends EDH play, and it's on the reserve list, and it's very old. Comes from my favorite set, homelands. Still waiting for a Chimeric Idol to, or what's it, Chimeric, no, Apocalyptic Chime to go up in price a little bit. Next, uh, Gaia's Avenger. This one has spiked like crazy. It has power equal and toughness equal to number of artifacts in play, which is not bad. It's not good either in my opinion, but it is a rare from a old set and also on the reserve list. It's a reasonable creature and it gets better the more artifacts your opponent controls, obviously, like so rings, uh, any type of artifact mana rocks will make this very big. The question is, how big does it get for one in double green? The card that I look at is Sarah's Ascendant. For one white, you get a 6-6 six, six, six Life Linker with flying. This seems a little less than that, but maybe it's being played in 93-94. That would be my assumption here. And it's just old. It's an old card. People probably played it when they were younger and now they have more money and they're going to buy this card out. Who knows? Uh, next, back to standard, we have a first look at a card that has gone up in price. Typically, a card starts off very high when it is revealed. Very few cards actually go up in terms of price. This is one of them. It costs five. It's a 4-4, four, four, but you also get a free free green dinosaur with trample and haste. So you get seven power. Three of that power and toughness have haste and trample. And on the flip side, it also gives future dinosaurs that you would be playing haste. So if you played another one of him, that would actually be a lot of that would be seven. That would be eleven damage the next turn across the table for another five. I it reminds me a lot of Broodmate Dragon. Uh, Broodmate Dragon was very interesting as a card. It did see a ton of play, but this one is more tribal in terms that you need the dinosaurs. That it gets better and better when you play dinosaurs, and actually it can come out fast. My gut feeling is the treasures will make it a very easy splashable card. Next, we get the Maelstrom Nexus that continues to go up in price. This is one of my favorite speculations. I did buy at the all-time low of under $4. I have a bunch of them. 
I need to find them, but I promise you I do have a bunch of these and I knew it would go up in price because it is that just read it. I mean, it's a mythic and the first spell you play each turn has cascade. That is pretty awesome. That is just so much value and five color dragons is going to play huge spells. It was very obvious that the card was not worth four dollars. It took a lot of time for it to slowly and slowly and slowly go up in price. Mainly because I feel like there was a lot of copies out there. Uh, the foil copy is not that much more expensive than non-foil because this was shards of or sorry, Alara Reborn. And I believe Alora Reborn was the set where pretty much they sold a pack where all the cards were in it were foil. Next, the old school vampires are going up in price. Uh, they are just skyrocketing any alpha or beta that you may have. Just hold on to it and ride it out because if you don't have it, now is not the time to buy it. The prices are insane. I don't see them holding up long term. But if you wanted to flip it quickly, you would, I mean, you would do extremely well. It's not a mystery why these black border old cards are going up in price. They are collector's items from people who have more money now than they used to. And that is, that's good for magic. I think it's healthy for magic. I wouldn't uh, particularly say that it will continue. But classic cards are classic. If I had to put, if I had to buy one card out before this happened, it would be Sarah Angel. My gut feeling is a lot of people grew up with that card and they love the card. And I honestly should probably buy some myself. All right, Brass Man. This is kind of an embarrassing card in my opinion. Uh, actually was played um, when I played Arabian Nights. It was considered one of the best creatures of all time. It's kind of funny to look at it and say, hmm, this was a good creature, but it was. It costs one. It's a one free. Doesn't untap as normal. You may pay one to untap during your untap phase to untap it. So it's $7. That's all it does. I mean... Back in the day, I kind of liked it because I thought the picture was kind of interesting and kind of cool. I collected a lot of them. I'm pretty sure I gave away them in the Patreon because I no longer have this card. And that's very strange to me because I have pretty much every other Arabian Night common and probably like at least 10 of those commons. And I'm missing this card. And I'm going to talk about another card I'm missing. Uh, it is a wizard card that is going up due to directly due to commander deck, and it's not bad. But I have this card, and it's not on the reserve list. I know that. And it is a rare from Stronghold. I have a lot of these. I just cannot find them. I tried to find them, but they might be in bulk. Although I typically separate my bulk rares from my non obviously my regular bulk, but it could be that I didn't realize this was a rare at the time. So that makes it more difficult because I don't sort, like I separate my bulk rares from my non, from my regular bulk, right? That's pretty easy. But with these older sets, it's, you know, I look at it and I couldn't say that this was a rare. I probably thought it was an uncommon or something and now it's in the pile of bulk that I haven't sorted yet. Or I sorted that one time to get the rares out. Uh, anyway, it's $8. It went from pennies to $8. And the reason is it's very good in the Wizard EDH deck. People are, people want this card in that deck because it once it, sac it sacrifices itself, but you gain control of target creature permanently and you just bring back, you just bring him back to do it again. And Shadow is not a mechanic most creatures have. Therefore, pretty much it reads as unblockable. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.